have a horrible sleep schedule. So we're just, I mean, this isn't the latest that I've ever made a video before. So like, it's okay. Like, we're good. You know, it's fine. Also, don't mind the fact that I literally have one ear for me and not the other one yet. Just let it be. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, again, not really much to update on you on. Except thinking that my mom is, like, less painful now. And more so of just kind of, like, sad. But not painful as much anymore. Like, it still kind of hurts. And I still really, like, miss her. And I still really want her, like, here, you know. But, like, I don't feel any, like, pain anymore. Like, I just feel loss. Which I guess is, like, progress? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's not all-consuming anymore, which is good. Um, and it's not painful anymore. It's just, like, sad. And I, like, still kind of feel, like, lost and empty. But, like, not so much that, like, it disrupts my, like, way of living. And not so much that it's, like, actually painful. <laughs> because this last like couple of weeks like I've just been like in like actual physical pain like I'm not even lying like it physically hurt <laughs> like I don't even know how else to explain it like it just like everything hurt <laughs> I just like I couldn't even breathe without like feeling pain so <laughs> um so now it's like subdued it's not like pain anymore well actually like the last couple of weeks it's been like periodically like there have been moments of like me being kind of like numb and then like dissociating and then which is like normal for me like i dissociate all times so, like it's not that big of a deal but like the all-consuming pain was like really hard to deal with um and then numbness kind of freaked me out too because like when I was feeling numb, like, I didn't really know, like, what to do, because, <laughs> like, it just felt weird to be numb, and I hadn't been numb in a while, because dissociation and numbness are, like, two different things, like, dissociation is kind of, like, you're in a different place, like, you're, like, just not present, and numbness is, like, everything's like numb like you're there you're present like everything's like still happening to you you just like don't feel it as much and so yeah it's different but yeah I don't know that's the best way that I can explain it and um so the numbness was not new because I've felt numb before it's just been a while so, like, it was kind of new, and it was kind of uncomfortable, and I just didn't like it. Plus, I felt guilty whenever I was numb, because I kind of felt like I wasn't feeling everything that I needed to be feeling. I kind of felt like the pain was what I deserved, and I was, like, feeling guilty over not feeling the pain. <laughs> I know, not healthy, but, you know, I'm not a healthy person, <laughs> so. Um... But yeah, I feel like it's been really hard. Um, it's still really hard. <laughs> but I'm not in pain anymore and I'm not numb anymore. I've come to accept the fact that my mom is gone. But she's not gone for my memories and she's not gone for my past and she's not gone from my love like I still love her like there are still things that I will always love about her and still things that I will always remember her by and even physical things that will always be here with me because of her like I wouldn't be here without her like my sister I mean <laughs> not my sister like my like aunt wouldn't be like the person that she is without my mom like there are just so many things that my mom left behind 
that aren't just like in my mind they're like physical things that like are going to stay with me forever you know and like I just have to focus on that and I have to focus on like my lover and like how great of a person she was while she was alive and not focus on the fact that like she's gone and I'm never going to be able to interact with her and how much I miss her that is true but Like, that doesn't mean that she's completely gone from my life because that's not true. That's never going to be true. I'm going to remember her and love her for the rest of my life, even without her in it. Like, she's still going to be with me in my mind, you know, and in my heart, you know. Sounds really cheesy. Also, sorry to hear the traffic. Um, So, yeah. Like, I just have come to accept that, like, it really, like, is sad that she's gone like i'm really like upset over that like you know obviously but like it doesn't hurt anymore and i'm not like no more in shock anymore i'm just kind of like i've come to like accept the fact that she's not physically here but she's like still with me and she will always be with me like no matter what like i'm not saying that i believe like she's gonna be a ghost haunting me or that like she's gonna be in heaven watching over me I'm saying that she's going to be in my memories and like she's like what she's taught me and like what she's done for me and what she's done for those around me like how she's affected the world in her own little ways like are going to be with me forever you know so that's what I have to focus on and that's what I have to cherish and I like need to stop worrying over and obsessing over the fact that that she's gone because i can't do anything about it like i can't talk to the grim reaper and be like hey bring her back like that's not gonna happen like (laughs) there's nothing i can do and i just have to accept that fact and move on you know and just continue living with her memory and her love so yeah i don't know (laughs) it sounds really cheesy but that's what i've come to believe and like no you know so (laughs) um yeah it's like (laughs) really hard sometimes but like i was able to get past the pain and i was able to get past the shock and I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, who knows? This state of like stability and this state of not contentment, but like acceptance might not be permanent, but it's here for now. So <laughs> that's all I can say. Like, I don't know how stable I am like who knows tomorrow I may be freaking out again and obsessing over the past and the fact that she's gone and feeling guilty and feeling the pain all over again like I don't know the future I just know the now and right now I've come to accept the fact that she may be physically gone but she's never going to be gone in my memories and in my heart and yada 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 so 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 cheesy um but yeah I'm also um (laughs) This is kind of embarrassing to admit. But, uh, when I was little, I was kind of weirdly obsessed with um, collecting things. Like, literally, I was obsessed with memories and, like, trinkets that, like, help trigger memories because, like, I, like, dissociated a lot even as a kid and I didn't know why I would like randomly black out and not remember things and so I felt like I needed to cling to something so like because of that I got this like obsessive like weird habit of like collecting things and then um like I would scrapbook the things that I would collect like gum wrappers and like coins that I would find on the ground like stickers just like literally anything and everything like I would collect and if I couldn't put it in a scrapbook I would put it in like a little box 
and I would like have my little trinket box and then I would have my like trinket scrapbooks and I had like dozens of scrapbooks and like one big trinket box that I put a bunch of trinkets in and like it was like <laughs> my favorite like thing to do and like what I like lived for kind of it was kind of really obsessive and embarrassing because <laughs> like <sighs> I collected the weirdest shit. Like, I collected, like, literal trash. Like, what the fuck was wrong with me? I don't understand. But it was weird. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I was just a weird kid. <laughs> so I was, like, really obsessed with, like, scrapbooking and, like, all of this kind of stuff. And my mom, like, loved it, like, for some reason. She loved that I loved scrapbooking and she thought it was, like, the cutest thing ever. And,. So, um, a while back, my mom and I went thrift store, thrift store shopping, which we do a lot, or we did a lot, because, like, I, actually, thrift stores are one of the few stores that I actually like shopping at, because thrift stores, like, have unique things, and, like, they have just, like, cool stuff, and, like, it's not boring because it's not the same like commercialized like department ass store like neat clean crowded shit it's like like old things and like unique like things and like things that like are alone like me and like oh my god I sound so stupid okay we're gonna shut up now okay anyways <laughs> so we go through shopping a lot because a, we're both broke, and B, I just, like, have a weird fascination with thrift stores. I don't know why. I just do. I love them, okay? Like, leave me alone. I liked thrift stores even before they were, like, popular, because, like, right now, for some reason, they're, like, really popular with, like, people for, like, clothes shopping, for, like, vintage clothes, because vintage clothes are trendy somewhat right now, which is, I don't know, <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Anyways, but a while back, like, two or three months ago, we went there shopping, and I saw this, like, binder that looked really cute, and it was, like, had these, like, spring flowers on it, and it had, like, a butterfly on it, and my mom's favorite, like, color is purple, and they're purple flowers, and her favorite animal, I guess you could say, even though it's an in insect, but it's, like, her favorite animal type of thing, you know? is a butterfly so like I got it and like I just told her that I would like make her a scrapbook for Christmas um and she was like super excited and she would like text me all the time being like hey like what'd you put in my scrapbook and I would always text back like I can't tell you like <laughs> it was kind of funny but um I still have it and I didn't actually like finish it yet but um I'm going to finish it anyways, even though I can't give it to her because, like, I want to. And, like, I don't know. Like, maybe, who knows, like, I might be able to keep it for myself. I might be able to, like, give it to my aunt, Tiffany. Or I might, like, um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But... I just, I just want to finish it, you know, because, like, she wanted me, you know, and I, like, I don't want to give it up, you know, it's hers, you know, I, I can't, like, stop now that I started, so I'm going to finish it, but, um, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, I also found some, like, old pictures of her, um, like, really old. Like, <laughs> she was in her early 20s, which was a long last time. <laughs> and, um, it was, like, her early 20s, and she was also, like, had just had me, or it was maybe even before she had me, and was just spending time with my dad, and, uh, like, it was just pictures of her and him and them traveling and stuff, which, okay. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, I found them and I thought they were cool. And then, um, 
my dad actually gave me like some driver's licenses of hers, like old ones, like 2001, which is the year that I was born. So like that's a long ass time ago, like 17 years. So you're like, holy shit. <laughs> so um, that was kind of cool too, and kind of sweet that my dad like got them, like still had them, and like decided to give them to me. You know, I thought that was cool. Um, again, my dad is still kind of, like, really awkward and, like, doesn't know how to deal with his, like, feelings and, like, me, you know? In fact, um, I think I already talked about it, though. Yeah, I already talked about it, but, like, he basically, like, came over... A few days ago and dropped off the driver's licenses of my mom's and then he also like bought some food which I'm grateful for thank you like who wouldn't be grateful for food but then he also brought over some news and he wanted to go shopping and I was like no okay no I don't like shopping and he just like it was very clear that like he wanted to go shopping because like he wanted some kind of familiarity And, like, it was almost a test for him to, like, be able to be, like, hey, like, let's go back to old times. Like, let's pretend that nothing's happening again. And I'm just, like, no, like, I can't do that. Like, I can't. Like, I'm not going to be your toy anymore. Like, I'm not going to be dragged along everywhere you want to go anymore. Like, I'm not that little girl anymore like I'm not naive anymore and like I'm also in or was in a lot of pain and like was not going to go shopping because a I don't enjoy shopping and b I'm in too much pain to even go to school and you expect me to just go freelance shopping with you like no I get it he's like not very empathetic and he doesn't know his own feelings and like he doesn't have like a grasp of reality very well and he is king at avoiding things and like not dealing with his problems and ignoring his problems but that's like no like i'm not going to like abide by your insecurities like i have my own shit to go through (laughs) which you obviously can't handle right now, so just leave. (laughs) I really, like, want to help my dad, but I can't help him if he doesn't want to help himself. And I'm in too delicate of a situation right now to deal with him. Like, I just don't know if I can handle him right now. Like, you know, like, I don't know if I can... (laughs) I don't know when I'm going to be able to handle him, (laughs) actually. uh, It's like... I know that, like, after my mom died, like, it's just, like, became even more apparent that, like, I can't pretend anymore because, like, it's not worth it. Like, pretending to be something you're not or hiding who you really are is like the worst possible thing that you can do in your life and unfortunately so many people do it but like it's the worst possible thing that you can do in life because you lose yourself for those around you and you put their needs before your own and before you know it your entire life is gone like everything that you could have done for yourself and everything that could have held true meaning to you doesn't because you wasted it for the people around you and you might never get it like you will never get the past back like you can never get those years lost back and I don't want to continue doing that with my life you know and if I continue pretending with my dad like that's just what's going to continue happening and I can't do that anymore like That's another thing that my mom helped me realize, even when she died, like, that was the final, like, push for me to, like, realize, like, I can't do this anymore, like, I can't, like, stay stuck in a situation that I hate anymore purely because it's for somebody that I love, because 
you you lose so much like my mom and I could have had so much more time if I had stood up for myself and if I had like stopped hiding like we could have gotten help so much sooner and like we could have prevented her death like I could have done something you know I mean (laughs) that kind of thinking is not going to get me anywhere but like it's also like something that I've come to realize like if I did stand up like things could have changed you know and I like could have been a better person and she could have been a better person as well like so I need to do that for myself now like I can't continue hiding you know it's not healthy and it's not right you know my dad can continue hiding if he wants to but I'm not going to even if it means that I'll lose him like I'm not going to hide anymore so yeah (laughs) um Also, this fighting is fucking horrible. Cause like, the lights dim because um, it's late and I don't want to wake people up with a bright ass light. And um, so I look like I'm like yellow and gross. It's like just. <sighs> and then also, ah. <laughs> uh, my voice is already soft to begin with, but I'm speaking lower because it's really late as well, which uh, is not going to help. Like, I'm sorry for those, like, you can't hear me very well. I just, like, I can't help it, you know? It gets really late, <laughs> and I don't have a mic, and I also have a very soft voice because genetics, you know? I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, oh, also I forgot to mention, um, this locket that my grandma gave me, like, for my 17th birthday, um, it's a really cool locket, actually, like, it's actually, like, real gold, and it's, like, from Japan, and it's, like, really cool, um, and I really, like, like it, like it did. I guess it's kind of a family heirloom. I don't really know what a family heirloom is to be exact. Like, I, I've never had one before. <laughs> but I guess it's kind of a family heirloom. Heirloom? I don't know. Um, but uh, she gave it to me for my 17th birthday, and it kind of meant a lot to me. And I just always thought that I would put her picture in it after she died, because, like, you know, it's from her, like, it's a thing to remember her by, yada yada yada, but, um, like, even though I say that I, like, don't feel, like, any pain anymore, like, from my mom, like, it's still, like, I, (laughs) I, I, I keep, like, I need something, like, physical to, like, hold on to her, because, like, Otherwise, like, I kind of, like, lose it. Like, the scrapbook that I'm working on and, like, pictures of her that I found and um, even this, like, old doll of hers, like, they're all helping me, well, (laughs) sorry, to, like, keep going, you know? Because, like, if I didn't have these things, like, I would have nothing to like remember her by other than my own memories and sometimes like I really doubt myself and like really question my reality and like don't know even who I am so like how can I depend on my memories of somebody else you know and it like really freaks me out sometimes I'm like I can't like handle it so like having like physical like reminders of her and like just like, physical things to, like, ground me to her, like, it helps, and, um, so this locket that my grandma gave me, like, um, it's a locket, so obviously, like, it's something that you can open up and put pictures in, like, that's what lockets are made for, kind of, 
and I just always thought that I was going to put my grandma's picture in it, but then I was realizing how much, like, having physical reminders of my mom were helping me, and I was, like, thinking, like, when I go back to school on Monday, like, I'm going to be kind of freaking out, because, like, school, I freaking hate school, plus, like, I've been kind of carrying this around everywhere, because, like, it really, like, helps soothe, like, my anxiety, and, like, helps me a lot, like, I don't know what it is, it just, like, really keeps me, like, grounded, you know, and I was just, like, kind of panicking about, like, when I go back to school, like, even when I look outside, like, I can't carry around a doll everywhere, like, and, like, I, I, I just don't have anything else to, like, hold her, you know, and, or, like, remember her by physically, I'm, like, that won't be weird for me to carry around, you know, so, I got to thinking that, like, I could put one of her pictures that I found in the locket and wear the locket. And, um, so I did. I, um, one of her pictures, there's actually, like, two copies of, which I don't know why there were two copies of it, but apparently there were two copies of the same picture of her, which was convenient for me because I get to keep one of the pictures, like, as a picture, and then I got to cut up the second copy and put it in the locket and then so like now I'm gonna be like wearing the locket with like her picture and like it's gonna be something like physical that like I can cling to of her you know because like I don't know like it's really like I don't know if it's just like temporary and like it's part of the grieving process to need something to ground you to and cling to even if it's just like something as simple as a picture in a locket like I just, like, really need it, you know, and so, yeah, that's what the lock is for <laughs> now, um, and obviously, like, when my grandma dies, like, I'm gonna put a picture of her and the locket too, but, like, for now, it's just my mom on one side, and then when my grandma dies, I'll put my grandma on the other side, and I'll probably have the locket for the rest of my life, you know, because it's immeasurably important to me now like I'm probably gonna wear it for like every day for a really long time like I can't imagine like not having it now like I used to kind of just be like oh this is a really cool like heirloom kind of thing but now it's like irreplaceable like I need this locket like it's like I, like, I don't know, <laughs> I, I can't, like, this is now the most important thing in my life, is that locket, which is, like, ridiculous, but, like, also, like, very important, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> this is weird, how I can get so attached to something as simple as, like, a necklace, but, like, that's, me, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess this is, like, goodbye for the day, because, <laughs> I don't know, I don't have anything else to say other than I'm, like, freaking weird, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, I don't know, I guess it's kind of old-fashioned to be wearing a locket with your dead mother in it, but, uh, also, is it just me, or does this kind of, like, does it kind of, like, okay. <sighs> okay, maybe this is just me, but sometimes, like, I feel like my life is, like, a cliche, like, story. Because, like, you know those, like, old western stories of, like, girls who, like, go through, like, abuse and, like, have, like, parents that are, like, dysfunctional and families that are dysfunctional and like go through abuse and like poverty and blah 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 and then like prematurely their mother dies and then they get like this really old locket and they like it's passed down from generation to generation and they wear the locket from their mom but then they put the picture a picture of their mom in their locket and like this locket is like irreplaceable to them and it's like like almost every single western like story has something along those lines like is it just me or do I fucking sound like a western story like fuck man like I'm a living cliche 
and it's not a great cliche it's a fucking horrible cliche i'm just saying like god damn like i mean what the fuck <laughs> this is weird i don't know anyways that's not the point <laughs> of this video the point of this video is another life update and uh another i'm still alive thing and uh i don't know <laughs> uh but yeah okay anyways goodbye